It was a conversation, though, that was cut short because the two princes were busy enjoying themselves playing with their cousins at the time. It's something Prince William admits to weighing heavily on his mind to this very day. Prince Harry, meanwhile, says that although he can't necessarily remember what was said in the phone call... In the quiet hours before her death, Princess Diana made one final phone call to her young sons, William and Harry. It was a brief exchange, filled with warmth but laced with a sense of urgency and tenderness that would later haunt them both. British sources has reported that Diana, Princess of Wales, has died. This was the last time they would hear their mother's voice, a call that, in hindsight, carries an eerie sense of finality. The truth may shock you. This fateful call left the boys with a memory that would follow them for years, adding a heartbreaking weight to Diana's final moments. You write in the book, you say, I'd often say it to myself first thing in the morning, maybe this is the day. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is the day that she's gonna mm -hmm. reappear. Yeah, hope. I had huge amounts of hope. Princess Diana's devotion to William and Harry. Princess Diana's role as a mother to William and Harry was central to her life and identity. Unlike many traditional royal parents, Diana took a hands-on approach to raising her sons. She was determined to give them an upbringing that was as close to normal as possible. Her goal was simple yet profound, to provide her boys with a childhood that blended royal duties with the everyday experiences of other children. She grounded them with compassion, humility, and a sense of freedom rarely afforded to those born into royalty. From the very beginning, Diana attended school events, took them on family vacations, and was often seen embracing them openly in public, gestures that were rare for British royalty. Her warmth and approachability set her apart. Diana wanted her boys to feel loved and supported in a way that allowed them to develop their own personalities, unburdened by the rigid expectations often placed upon young royals. Diana also prioritized exposing William and Harry to life outside the palace walls. She famously took them to fast food restaurants, amusement parks, and even homeless shelters, showing them a world far removed from royal privilege. These outings were intended to teach them about the struggles and realities faced by ordinary people, something she felt was crucial for them to understand. Her goal was to nurture their empathy and help them develop a genuine appreciation for those less fortunate, a value she demonstrated in her own humanitarian work. Her devotion was evident in the ways she worked to protect them from the darker aspects of royal life, particularly the ever-intrusive press. Diana knew all too well the harsh impact of constant media attention. She was determined to shield her sons from it as much as she could. This protective instinct only grew stronger as she experienced the strain of public scrutiny on her personal life. Despite her own challenges, she placed William and Harry's well-being above all else. Diana's influence on her sons extended beyond their childhoods. It shaped the men they would eventually become. Both William and Harry have frequently spoken of their mother's impact, crediting her with teaching them kindness, resilience, and a deep sense of social responsibility. Her values live on through their public work and personal lives, where they continue to honor her legacy by advocating for causes close to her heart. In Diana's final phone call, these elements of her devotion, her warmth, her protective nature, and her desire to instill love and empathy in her sons were present. For William and Harry, that last conversation would become a bittersweet reminder of the irreplaceable bond they shared with a mother who dedicated herself to giving them a life of both duty and compassion. The unforgettable phone call. In the late evening of August 30th, 1997, while enjoying the end of their summer holiday at Balmoral Castle in Scotland, young Princes William and Harry received a phone call that, in time, would take on an unforgettable and haunting significance. The call was from their mother. Princess Diana was on holiday in Paris with her companion, Dodi Fayed. At just 15 and 12 years old, William and Harry were like any other boys their age, eager to make the most of their last days of summer. This desire for play would shape what would later become one of the most bittersweet memories of their lives. Diana's call came in during an evening when the boys were busy with their cousins, absorbed in the excitement of the night. To them, it was just another check-in, a quick moment of reassurance that their mother was safe and happy. Diana's voice came through the line, and it was filled with her characteristic warmth and love. She asked about their day, inquired about their adventures, and listened patiently as they quickly shared their stories, 
The boys were eager to return to playing and kept the conversation short. They answered with quick, light-hearted responses. They said goodbye, unaware that this would be the last time they would hear their mother's voice. Diana, as always, ended the call with loving words and a gentle reminder of her devotion to them, telling them how much she missed them and that she would see them soon. But on that night, there was an added sense of tenderness in her tone. It was as though she sensed the importance of every word spoken, even if her young sons did not. This call, which seemed so routine in the moment, would come to represent the last thread connecting William and Harry to their mother. In the years that followed, both princes would reflect on this brief exchange with a mixture of nostalgia, regret, and pain. The brevity of their final conversation weighed heavily on them, especially given that they were too young to understand the importance of each second they spent talking to her. They hadn't known that night would be the last chance to tell their mother all the things they would have wanted her to know. Diana, however, conveyed everything she could through her voice, filling it with love that would resonate with her sons long after she was gone. The setting of the phone call adds another layer of poignancy. Balmoral was a place they associated with family, security, and happy memories. Now the castle would forever be marked by the bittersweet memory of their final words with Diana. Though the boys were protected within the royal estate's comforting walls, their mother was far from the safety of family. She was facing a city filled with flashing cameras, prying eyes, and the relentless attention of the media. As time passed, William and Harry spoke openly about that fateful call and the regret they felt over its brevity. The truths they expressed may shock you. For two young boys, the weight of that regret is something they have carried into adulthood. It shapes their memories of Diana and intensifies the profound sense of loss that marked their early lives. The Aftermath, William and Harry's Initial Reactions. On the morning of August 31, 1997, Princes William and Harry's lives changed forever. They were told that their mother, Princess Diana, had died in a car crash in Paris. The young princes were just 15 and 12 years old. They were staying at Balmoral Castle in Scotland with their father, Prince Charles, and other members of the royal family. When news of the crash reached Balmoral in the early hours, the royal household faced a difficult decision. How to break the devastating news to the boys in a way that would allow them a final moment of peace before the enormity of their loss set in. Charles chose to wait until the morning to tell his sons. He hoped to spare them at least a few more hours from the heartbreak they were about to face. When he entered their room and broke the news, both William and Harry were struck with disbelief. For Prince William, 15 at the time, the shock was almost paralyzing. His mother had been his confidant, a grounding force who had helped him navigate the challenges of being second in line to the British throne. Now, faced with a grief he couldn't express, William instinctively assumed the role of protector for both himself and his younger brother, Harry. Though still a child, he was thrust into a position of emotional responsibility. He tried to balance his own sorrow while trying to shield Harry from the full weight of their loss. For Prince Harry, who was only 12, the reaction was one of deep, aching disbelief. He has since described feeling numb, as though the reality of his mother's death was something he couldn't fully absorb. His memories of Diana are tinged with the pain of her absence and a lingering sense of incompleteness. The suddenness of her loss left him with questions he couldn't yet articulate and an emptiness he would struggle with for years to come. Both boys felt an overwhelming sense of regret, replaying the brevity of their last terrifying phone call with her, wishing they had said more, listened more, held on longer. As days became weeks, William and Harry were faced with an overwhelming public response to Diana's death. The streets of London were filled with flowers, letters, and grieving admirers, and the world mourned alongside them. But for two young boys, this very public mourning intensified their private grief. They were forced to confront their pain, under the scrutiny of millions, while coming to terms with the fact that the mother who had so carefully shielded them from the harshness of royal life could no longer protect them. In those early days, the shock of Diana's passing began a journey of grief for William and Harry that would follow them into adulthood. In a way, the loss of their mother marked the end of their childhoods, but it also set the stage for a lifelong struggle with the weight of her memory and the challenges of moving forward without her guiding presence. Media intrusion and paparazzi's role. 
Throughout her life, Princess Diana was both captivated and tormented by the media's intense focus on her every move. The relentless scrutiny she endured only intensified in her final years, creating an environment of constant surveillance and pressure. Diana's final moments in Paris serve as a haunting illustration of this. Her tragic death was directly linked to the actions of a frenzied pack of paparazzi who pursued her vehicle through the city streets. In her quest for personal freedom and happiness, Diana often spoke out against this invasive presence in her life. She frequently denounced the media's interference and their lack of respect for her privacy. Diana's criticism of the media stemmed from years of harassment and exploitation. From her early days in the royal family, photographers and reporters followed her tirelessly. They captured every personal struggle and each public appearance. The press scrutinized her marriage. They speculated on her relationships, and they even tracked her vacations. As her marriage with Prince Charles deteriorated, Diana found herself increasingly isolated. Still, she was unable to escape the cameras. She became an unwilling icon, caught in a cycle where her every movement was monetized and sold to the public. She openly voiced her frustration and called attention to the negative impact the constant intrusion had on her and her children. In her final weeks, Diana's battle with the paparazzi had reached a fever pitch. Her relationship with Dodi Fayed was a source of insatiable curiosity for the press. The paparazzi documented their every outing, meal, and conversation. Seeking refuge from the constant gaze, Diana and Dodi traveled to Paris, hoping for a brief respite. But that night, as Diana's car sped through the Pont de l'Alma tunnel, a dozen photographers on motorcycles pursued her vehicle. They were determined to capture one last image for the evening. Tragically, this relentless chase contributed directly to the fatal crash that would end her life and leave the world in shock. For Diana, the experience of being followed was more than an annoyance. It was a constant source of fear. Her relationship with the media was one she described as oppressive and terrifying. She once famously said, I'd like to be a queen of people's hearts, but I don't see myself being queen of this country. The world's fascination with her life was one she bore with a heavy heart, often afraid of the lengths to which the paparazzi would go to get a story. Her fears were tragically realized in the most devastating way. The media's role in Diana's death cast a long shadow over her legacy. It transformed the way the public and the press viewed personal privacy. For William and Harry, their mother's final moments symbolized the consequences of a life lived under the unyielding lens of the media. The relentless pursuit that defined her last hours was terrifying and has haunted them. It adds a chilling layer to the tragedy of her final phone call and the events that followed. Diana's untimely death was more than a personal loss for her sons. It was a public demonstration of the dangers posed by an insatiable media. The terrifying reality of her final moments highlighted the cruelty of relentless press intrusion and solidified the determination of her sons to seek privacy and protect their own families from the same invasive scrutiny. Diana's desire for privacy and freedom. Princess Diana's longing for privacy was a constant battle. It was as if she was involved in a relentless pursuit to carve out a life for herself and her sons away from the rigid structures of the monarchy and the unyielding glare of the media. From her early days as a young bride, Diana had been thrust into a spotlight she never fully anticipated. Over time, the intense pressures of royal life began to take a toll and only amplified her desire for autonomy. Diana grappled with an institution that valued tradition and discretion over personal freedom and a public that seemed determined to know her every thought and feeling. Her frustrations with the royal family only intensified as her marriage to Prince Charles deteriorated. Diana's compassionate nature and her unique approach to public duty had won her the admiration of millions, but it also set her apart from the more reserved style preferred by the royals. Feeling constrained by the rules that dictated her life, she struggled to find her own voice within the rigid monarchy. Her separation from Charles in 1992 gave her a taste of the independence she craved, but the public interest in her personal life only grew stronger. Despite the separation, she was still bound by royal expectations and protocol, making it difficult for her to establish a life on her own terms. In her final years, Diana made a determined effort to step away from the royal identity she had been assigned and to create a life that reflected her own values. 
She resigned from nearly all her official royal duties, choosing instead to focus on the humanitarian causes closest to her heart, from advocating for AIDS awareness to her campaign against landmines. Free from many of the formal engagements that had once defined her life, Diana found a renewed sense of purpose and control. This was a period of exploration and growth, where she began to reclaim her personal freedom and define herself outside of the royal framework. One of Diana's greatest motivations was her desire to protect William and Harry from the relentless media attention that had dominated her life. She understood all too well the damaging effects of constant scrutiny and was determined to give her sons a more grounded and private upbringing. As she attempted to balance her own desire for freedom with her responsibilities as a mother, Diana worked tirelessly to shield them from the harsh realities of being public figures. She made it a priority to create experiences that would allow them to feel like ordinary children. Her final phone call to William and Harry was colored by this ongoing struggle for privacy and normalcy. She knew the boys were safe at Balmoral, away from the public eye and surrounded by family. But she still worried about the influence of the media on their lives. She hoped that by distancing herself from the royal spotlight, she could offer them a life that was less dictated by duty and more defined by personal choice. Ultimately, Diana's quest for privacy became one of the defining struggles of her life, a fight against forces that sought to keep her confined to a role she had outgrown. Her last years were marked by both her successes and her frustrations. In her final moments, this desire for freedom was still evident, a wish not only for herself, but also for the two sons who meant everything to her. The Lasting Regret In later interviews, both princes have spoken openly about their regret over that short, hurried phone conversation. They've both expressed how its brevity and the circumstances surrounding it have affected them deeply. Prince Harry, in particular, has reflected on this moment with raw honesty. He's admitted that he would have done things differently if he had known it would be the last time he'd hear his mother's voice. I have to deal with that for the rest of my life, he shared when asked about the enduring regret that haunts him. He has since said that he often replays that moment in his mind, imagining what he might have said or asked if he'd understood its significance. The regret is not simply over words unsaid, it's over an innocence lost and an irreversible goodbye. Prince William too has spoken about the call with similar remorse. As the older brother, he felt a particular responsibility for Harry in the days that followed their mother's passing, but he also harbors his own sense of regret. William has admitted that he wished they had spent more time talking with her that night. In interviews, he has described the lingering sense of guilt he felt over cutting the conversation short. For William, who often carries himself with a reserved composure, these moments of reflection reveal a vulnerability tied directly to that final call. Both princes have shared how this experience shaped their outlook on family and privacy. The abruptness of Diana's passing, combined with the brevity of their last words, instilled in them a profound respect for the fleeting nature of time with loved ones. They have spoken about how it has influenced their dedication to protecting their own families from the same media intrusion that contributed to their mother's tragic end. Speculation surrounding Diana's final days. In the days leading up to her tragic death, Princess Diana's life was marked by an unusual level of tension and secrecy. She had spoken openly to close friends and confidants about her anxieties, including security concerns and fears for her safety. Her complicated relationship with Dodi Fayed, the son of Egyptian billionaire Mohammed Al Fayed, added further intrigue to her final days. Speculation swirled around their relationship and their future together. These factors created an atmosphere thick with uncertainty and apprehension and added weight to what would become her final phone call to William and Harry. Diana's relationship with Dodi had been the subject of intense media scrutiny from the outset. Just weeks before her death, paparazzi had captured photographs of the two on a yacht in the Mediterranean, sparking rumors about a possible engagement. While the depth and seriousness of their relationship remain unclear, the media's obsession with their every move added pressure to Diana's life. Close friends have since revealed that Diana was uncertain about Dodie's role in her life and was trying to navigate her feelings amidst constant public speculation. Beyond the complexities of her personal life, Diana had expressed concerns over her safety in her final months. Friends recall that she often spoke of feeling watched, not only by the paparazzi, but by figures within the establishment. She believed they were monitoring her actions.
Diana's personal bodyguard, Ken Worf, had retired from his position in 1993. After that, her protection became a patchwork of hired security, which only added to her sense of vulnerability. She often shared her fears of a plot against her, though it remains unclear whether these fears were grounded in real threats or a heightened response to the pressures she endured. The night of the accident, Diana's distress seemed palpable. The couple had initially planned to stay at Dodie's apartment in Paris, but changed their itinerary at the last minute due to privacy concerns. The shift in plans led them to the Ritz Paris. It was owned by Dodie's father, and they thought they would be safe from the press. However, as they left the hotel that night, a group of paparazzi swarmed their car, setting in motion the fateful chase through the Pont de l'Alma tunnel. The unanswered questions surrounding her final days contribute to the tragic mystique that envelops her story. Her vulnerability, the intense media pursuit, and the unresolved complexities of her personal relationships suggest that her last days were anything but serene. The fears and concerns she voiced give her last words to William and Harry an added weight, transforming a mother's reassurance into a haunting farewell. Honoring Diana's legacy. Princess Diana's legacy lives on through her sons. William and Harry have taken up her humanitarian spirit and dedication to service in their own lives. Both princes honor their mother's memory not only through their public work, but also through the compassionate values she instilled in them from a young age. Diana's influence is evident in their careers, their personal commitments, and their determination to make a difference in the world, just as she did. One of the most prominent ways William and Harry have honored Diana's legacy is through their commitment to mental health advocacy. Diana was one of the first members of the British royal family to openly discuss mental health issues. It was brave, and it broke taboos and challenged stigmas. Following in her footsteps, William and Harry have continued this work. They speak candidly about their own struggles with grief and the impact of Diana's death on their mental health. In 2016, they, along with the Duchess of Cambridge, launched the Heads Together campaign, an initiative focused on encouraging open conversations about mental health and providing resources for those in need. The campaign has helped bring mental health into the mainstream with William and Harry both crediting their mother's compassion and bravery as the driving force behind their advocacy. Harry, in particular, has often spoken about the emotional toll of losing his mother and the importance of addressing mental health head-on. His openness has inspired many to confront their own challenges and seek help. He's breaking down barriers in a way that reflects Diana's own empathetic approach to public service. Harry's involvement in projects like the Invictus Games a sporting event for wounded and recovering service members, also speaks to his commitment to helping others overcome adversity. This was something Diana championed in her work with hospitals, hospices, and landmine survivors. Prince William has also continued Diana's charitable focus, particularly in his dedication to homelessness and environmental conservation. In 2009, he became the patron of Centerpoint, a charity supporting homeless youth. This was a cause Diana introduced him to when he was a child. His work with Centerpoint echoes his mother's values and shows his commitment to uplifting vulnerable communities. That final call, as brief as it was, encapsulates the enduring connection between Diana and her sons, a connection rooted in love, tinged with sorrow, but alive in every act of remembrance. For William and Harry, Diana remains a constant presence. She is a guardian of sorts whose memory is woven into the fabric of their lives. Through their work, their families, and their own commitment to a kinder world, Diana's legacy lives on, a lasting tribute to a mother whose influence will never fade. Do you have a recollection of a last phone call with a loved one? Share your thoughts with us in the comments. We'd love to hear. For now, we're done. Catch you in the next video.